You're listening to Flight Plans, the SAE Aero Design Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Flight Plans, the official podcast of SAE Aero Design. We are here with Mike Bearswell, who is the organizer for the SAE Aero Design East competition for this year. We were there last year. We're here again this year. Um, this is the third year we've been at this venue, and it's a really awesome venue. So, um, Mike, I wanted to first let you introduce yourself and how you got involved with Aero Design in general. Well, I uh, am currently a, an organizer for you all, but I've been involved with SAE Aero Design for 15 years. Has it been that long? 2002, <laughs> 2003 was the first season I raced in. And then 2003, 2004, I, I raced my second year. And then I participated as a faculty advisor and pilot for a number of years. And uh, then an oral presentation judge, a paper judge, chief paper judge, rules committee member, and now contest director. So you've done it all. Yeah, well, I don't know about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's a couple of jobs I don't want to do, like uh, <laughs> chair or treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have other people that, that can take up those roles. So I just want to thank you again for taking some time to talk to us about your competitions coming up in just a few short weeks. Are you guys ready? Yeah, I think we're ready. We've got a, a great event planned um, here in just a couple of weeks. Everybody's excited. The airport staff is excited. The uh, Museum facility that we will be hosting the uh, oral presentations is excited, and we're actually starting present our uh, paper writing judging uh, this week. Your venue is a little bit unique for what we usually see at an Aero Design. What can students who have never been there look forward to with your particular event? Well, our event is the host site for. I think the third largest air show in the world, uh, second largest in the United States behind Oshkosh. Uh, It's a permanent facility that uh, has a museum of uh, a number of different aircraft on it. Um, I got in, I got the opportunity to work with them in the 2015 uh, racing season uh, through the uh, state of Florida actually recommended them as a uh, potential host and they, they uh, volunteered their conference center and room at the airport to fly. Um, the museum's kind of interesting. It has uh, the Howard Hughes collection in it, Howard Hughes' personal collection. Uh, you can see uh, the Spruce Goose's uh, models and blueprints and even a wind tunnel model in there of the Spruce Goose, uh, as well as uh, they have a sea dart, which is kind of rare. I think only two or three of those were built. They have a Lockheed VXF-1, which is a vertical takeoff propeller-driven aircraft that, that Lockheed built in the 60s. I think three of those were built. Uh, they have a high school that's dedicated to aviation education and engineering on their property. And so this event is right up their alley to help support um, the aviation education. And tech inspection takes place right in the middle of all of this, doesn't it? Right in the middle of all of this, um, <laughs> as well as all the presentation judging is throughout the campus. There's static displays of aircraft all through the campus. They have a gift shop, a couple of gift shops that are open year round um, where you can buy aviation related things. And um, it, it's a neat venue. <laughs> so teams, if you show up with your plane already built, you'll get a chance to hang out around and, and look at some of this cool stuff if you aren't scrambling at the last minute. So I love that part of this particular competition. This ground is awesome. The amphitheater is awesome. We do registration right on the middle of the stage where we'll, this year we'll have the Friday night mandatory meeting. We'll also be on that stage. Uh, I know that we just sent out on social media some some wording about that mandatory meeting. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Mike, for students that haven't been to an aero design? yet what that Friday meeting is like and why it's important? So the Friday meeting is extremely important. Uh, We review safety uh, on the flight line for the Saturday and Sunday fly off. It's of critical importance to review that safety. We cover uh, the uh, types of apparel you should wear, the types of animals you might encounter. It's a large airport space uh, in a swampy part of Florida where uh, there are 
known to have uh, visitors <laughs> of Florida natives out there. Um, as well as uh, contest operations. Uh, you'll learn how to get through the whole flight process, through the queue lines, the weigh-in, uh, repeat tech inspection if you have to. Uh, you'll learn where to pick up your flight cards. It, it's really important for at least one team member from every team to be present to answer questions um, that many of the volunteers on site won't know the answers to because it's a SAE processing sort of event. So for teams that haven't been to competition, this will be the first time they're going through a tech inspection. What do they need to know about making sure they maximize their time on Friday during the day? Well, tech inspection will be done to a schedule. Every team will get a scheduled uh, tech inspection time. Um, it's important for you to try to hit that time precisely. We try to schedule our oral presentations and our tech inspections where every team has plenty of time in between both events, uh, as well as having access to the flying field for a couple of hours on Friday to get any practice flights in. It is at an airport, so practice flights have to be scheduled with the FAA, so there's a very limited range of practice flights available. Um, but we try to make sure that every team has access to the runway for a, a block of time during that day. So it's important for you to hit your inspection time, not to throw off the schedule for others. Uh, it's also critical for teams to be aware that we do a pre-inspection event. There's about 10 items that teams tend to miss on their first pass through the tech inspection way that we've found makes inspection much more efficient is for teams to be ready, be 30 minutes ahead of the queue, 30 minutes to an hour probably, and get into the pre-inspection line before you proceed to inspection. That way you can address and adjudicate any uh, of the more common errors that teams tend to make in inspection. Those get caught in that pre-inspection filter. So one of the most important parts of what Mike just said to you guys is that you need to know when your inspection and your presentation time are. That's one of the mistakes that we see teams making over and over again. So bring your binder, make sure in your binder you have all of your paperwork, um, everything for your tech inspection, everything for your presentation, but also make sure you have a schedule of the events. We will have printed schedules of the overall events, but we we won't have copies to just hand you of when your events are scheduled. You can't show up at noon on Friday and expect to not have missed either your tech inspection or your presentation. So you really should be prepared on Thursday night for that. So try to arrive early at competition. I hear there might be something in the works for Thursday afternoon. Um, want to you want to say anything special about that Mike yeah I'm I'm working with a group that I think the students will be very excited about um, the possibility of having an optional Thursday night event um, that will probably have an RSVP sort of register uh, for it it'll be a limited uh, a limited occupancy sort of thing. Uh, so be on the lookout for an announcement in the coming days on, on whether or not I'm able to get that finalized. It's a local group, so you won't have to go far from the airport to participate in this activity, but it, it's kind of an exciting thing. Uh, one thing I also wanted to add to Amanda's last comment uh, regarding the facility uh, and scheduling is that uh, the registration flyers and a uh, pre-event packet will go out on the website that will contain a facility map. This facility is large. It's very sprawling. Your oral presentation rooms will be spread out from one end of the campus to the other. So it's important to also be aware of where your scheduled presentation room will be and be familiar with the facility map because uh, it's it's difficult to find where you're going if you if you're not familiar with the facility layout in plenty of time before your your oral presentation or your inspection time. There will be maps of the facility throughout the facility uh, that are related to the competition. You are here sorts of markings on them. Uh, you can always find those at tech inspection or registration also for directions of where to go. 
Yeah, so any of those documents that the organizers released, you guys can find on the series resources page at saeaerodesign.com. So look for them there. Um, we'll also make sure we put them out on social media as well. So just keep an eye open and you will be in the loop for all of that. One of the things about the campus being so large is a lot of times students come to us at the, the registration desk to ask for directions. And in reality, that's we, we have no idea what, where all these rooms are on the campus. So <laughs> yeah, so refer to your map. Again, print it out. Keep it in your binder. Um, it's one of the best practices for sure. We always know that when a team captain comes up to registration with their binder, they're going to have a pretty good weekend. So um, be prepared and you guys should have a good weekend. Um, one of the other things to mention specifically about this site and this weekend is that there's another large event going on in the area. So how will that impact teams and how can they um, plan around that, Mike? Well, it's primarily going to impact traffic in the area as well as their hotel reservations. If you haven't made your hotel reservations now, you need to do it immediately. The event in question is the Florida Strawberry Festival. It occurs on the same side of town as the airport. And so traffic in the evenings can be a, a consideration that uh, teams need to take into account, especially on the uh, northwest side of the airport. Um, it's also a good opportunity to get uh, inexpensive strawberries, uh, <laughs> being the ideal season for strawberries in Florida. Yeah, this is a an event that Bob Sackler, our former uh, ma longtime manager of CDS, always mentioned to us. So I'm sure he'll be very happy to hear that we're going to be there on the same weekend. Finally, we, he's been waiting for it. So um, one thing Mike mentioned were hotel rooms. The SA Air Design East in Lakeland, they have a interesting relationship with the County Board of Tourism that helps support this event. And one of the ways that they do that are um, by tracking the hotel rooms. So you guys are going to see a question about hotel rooms on your post-event survey. Please make sure you fill out that information. It's important to us to make sure that the community that we're coming to understand the impact that we bring as a competition and you guys do as students to their area. We've had a lot of success with local governments really being grateful for the um, business that we bring. And it's a cool side effect of these competitions. That's uh, absolutely right. That uh, Visit Central Florida is one of our sponsors for this uh, event. And the state uh, of Florida is actually very interested in hosting STEM events in the future in the state of Florida. Um, and so they lean forward with a positive attitude to welcome us into the community. And all they ask is that we help them track the financial impact of bringing STEM events to Florida. Yeah, we want to give love to the sponsors who give love to us. It's the only way these competitions happen. And uh, we're really grateful, especially when we have local support outside of the national support from Lockheed Martin and other sponsors. So make sure you fill out that question. Take it seriously. It's important. So, Mike, I want to wrap up with one final question. You've seen all of the stages of, you know, from being a competitor to being a faculty advisor, now an organizer. You are obviously an employee at Lockheed Martin. How do you think being a competitor in air design has helped you in your career? Well, it really all boiled down to helping to to learn how to wrap my arms around a large project, uh, to see a design from white paper to the production of hardware to uh, testing. Um, it also helped me to uh, be more efficient at design. It, it, today, it helps keep my skills sharp. My participation today helps keep my early career skills uh, in advanced mathematics sharp. Um, just reviewing papers and talking to students, coaching students through uh, some of the more difficult uh, parts of uh, the design. You know, I, I, many of the students will know that I like to visit teams in the pits areas during the during the fly off, and um, I'm generally pretty willing to uh, answer questions on on design philosophy to uh, strengthen um, a team's position in coming years uh, with any team that's willing to talk. Um, so if you're interested in, you know, learn, learning some 
some new ideas or or even talking about how you could do things uh, better in the future. Um, I'm definitely willing to do that. It helps you guys. It helps me keep my skill set sharp. It's been great for um, the development of my career with uh, managing a budget, managing uh, a large crowd of people. Uh, running one of these events has somewhere on the order of two to 300 volunteers uh, to make the event happen. Uh, and by the way, the volunteers are wonderful, wonderful people that support these events. Um, from uh, a student perspective, you know, a volunteer is is uh, there for your safety, is there to try to help you have a great weekend. If a volunteer asks you to do something, it's usually because SAE or the, uh, the airport staff has asked us to uh, remind students of uh, of, uh, proper uh, methodologies in the in the competition. Uh, so be respectful and mindful that the volunteers are there to to help you. And uh, sometimes that that can mean being a little curt if students haven't listened the first two or three times. The volunteers are there to 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 be your friends, and it takes a tremendous level of effort from the volunteers to pull these competitions off. Many, many, many months of work um, for the subcommittee, which is made up of about ten individuals, in preparation for the for the competition to happen, as well as caterers and and uh, equipment vendors and. You know, all the way down to to making sure that the number of porta johns and wash stations is appropriate. We try to make sure that every event is consistent and looks the same, whether it's in Florida, Texas, or California. Yeah, so a lot of good nuggets in there. Make sure you stop Mike and ask him about what he thinks about what's going on with your team. He has a lot of information to share, and he truly understands that this is engineering design competition intended to move students further in their career. So. Uh, make sure you tap his brain a little bit. And then the other thing I wanted to say about volunteers was that one of the really cool things about having a, a subcommittee like yours, Mike, is that they put in just as much work as these students have the entire year. You know, student, I feel like a, a lot of times teams don't quite understand that we understand how much work they've put into these projects. And uh, it, it's the same on the organizing side too. They're putting in crazy amounts of hours and, um, volunteering their time and, and not just on that weekend, but for months and months and months beforehand. And, uh, it's all really cool to see it all come together and watch these teams be able to present something that they've worked really hard on. So I just want to thank you for taking the time to talk to us again, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Well, thanks, Amanda. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you guys too. It's, uh, it's uh, about uh, 28 days out now, I think, uh, <laughs> today being the ninth and, uh, the competition starts on Friday the 9th, so um, 28 days to go and uh, the most stressful 28 days of the organizer's job, right? <laughs> so, it'll be here soon and then, uh, then the fun happens. Thanks for listening to Flight Plans, the SAE Aero Design Podcast. As always, we want to hear from you, so email aerodesign at sae.org. The show notes for this episode and all others can be found at aerodesign.fireside.fm. Stay safe and we'll catch you next episode.